Romance on the High Seas, a 1948 film, sets sail with a delightful mix of humor, surprises, and poignant moments. As you watch, be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions as funny, shocking, and heartwarming facts unfold before your eyes. Amidst the various roles portrayed in the film, you may find yourself wondering, out of the many characters, which one was your favorite? Feel free to share your thoughts on the characters that resonated with you. Have you ever been inspired or impacted by this classic movie? If so, we'd love to hear your personal stories. Whether it's a fond memory or an unexpected connection, share your experiences in the comments below. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film? Your stories add depth to the shared appreciation for romance on the high seas, and we look forward to reading about them in the comments. So, buckle up for a cinematic journey filled with laughter, surprises, and touching moments. Keep watching and let us know your thoughts and memories. Romance on the High Seas is a Technicolor film from 1948 that unfolds a straightforward narrative involving a troubled married couple, Elvira and Michael. The plot revolves around their mutual suspicions, leading Elvira to feign a cruise while secretly staying ashore to keep tabs on Michael. Doris Day makes her film debut as a club singer, stepping into Elvira's role on the cruise, while Michael hires a private detective, played by Jack Carson, to tail his wife. The film boasts strong performances from its cast, with Doris Day standing out with her lively and engaging screen presence. The musical contributions by Stein and Kahn are generally enjoyable, complementing the overall viewing experience. The supporting cast includes notable character actors, with Cuddles Sekal adding a delightful touch as Elvira's uncle. One notable aspect of the film is the impressive wardrobe designed by Milo Anderson. The fashion choices, coupled with the attractive ensemble cast, contribute to the film's visual appeal. The combination of these elements results in a pleasant and entertaining cinematic experience. In summary, Romance on the High Seas weaves together a simple yet engaging storyline with vibrant performances, enjoyable music, and appealing visuals. The film offers a delightful mix of comedy and romance, making it an enjoyable watch for those seeking a lighthearted cinematic experience. This review captures the essence of the film without the inclusion of specific jokes or insider references. Magic became the British release title for the 1948 film due to the popularity of its Oscar-nominated song. The music was by Jules Stein with lyrics by Sammy Kahn. Warner Bros. initially sought Judy Garland for the role of Georgia Garrett, but was unable to secure her due to MGM's policy. Mary Martin was also considered, but Betty Hutton was eventually cast in a loan-out deal with Paramount. However, Hutton had to withdraw before filming began due to pregnancy. In her screen test song, A Rainy Night in Rio, with music by Arthur Schwartz and lyrics by Leo Robin, Doris Day initially followed with director Michael Curtis's instructions to emulate Betty Hutton's frenzied style. Day later requested to perform the number in her natural, more sedate manner. These insights offer a glimpse into the casting challenges and creative decisions surrounding the making of the film, shedding light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics. Each casting choice and artistic decision played a role in shaping the final production, reflecting the intricacies of the Hollywood film industry during that era. I'm in love, put them in a box, and its magic emerged as standalone hits from the 1948 film soundtrack, all released as singles by Doris Day. Notably, its magic stood out as the most successful among them. This film marked the initial collaboration between Jack Carson and Doris Day, the first of three films they worked on together between 1948 and 1949. These productions marked Day's debut in the film industry, and interestingly, she and Carson were romantically involved during this period. During the early stages of filming Doris Day, upon seeing herself in the dailies, felt embarrassed by her performance. She sought advice from director Michael Curtis, who reassured her by saying, you're a natural just as you are. If you learn how to act, you'll ruin everything. These insights illuminate the commercial success of the film's music releases, the beginning of a cinematic partnership, and Day's initial self-doubt, ultimately shaping the narrative of this early Hollywood production. Each aspect contributes to the unique dynamics of romance on the high seas, offering a glimpse into the nascent career of a film icon. Remade from the 1933 film The Keyhole, Romance on the High Seas established Doris Day as a new box office draw. Alongside, it gifted her with the enduring hit It's Magic, nominated for an Oscar. 
In a twist of fate, Day and Jack Carson's on-screen collaboration sparked a short-lived romance. This film not only marked the beginning of Day's cinematic journey, but also set the stage for her musical success and a brief off-screen connection with Carson. The remake not only breathed new life into an earlier storyline, but also became a pivotal moment in Day's burgeoning career. The intersection of budding stardom, chart-topping music, and a fleeting romance contributes to the unique narrative of romance on the high seas. In her screen debut, Doris Day secured the fourth billing in what was originally titled Romance on the High Seas. Despite her relatively low billing, audience response was so overwhelming that Warner Bros. promptly signed her to a seven-year contract, leading to her emergence as a top 10 box office star with numerous film appearances. The film's original title, Romance on the High Seas, hints at its musical theme, but it was later changed to Romance on the High Seas. Despite this alteration, the movie served as Doris Day's cinematic breakthrough, catapulting her into stardom. Following Doris Day's passing in May 2019, Jenny's Page, a cast member younger than Day by five months, remains the last surviving member of the film. With Doris Day's swift ascent and the change in cast dynamics over time, Jenny's Page now holds a unique connection to the movie's history. This succinct overview encapsulates the pivotal moment in Doris Day's career, marked by her impactful debut, the film's original title, and the current status of the cast, particularly with the passing of the iconic Day. It reflects the straightforward and factual nature of the movie's significance in shaping Day's enduring legacy in Hollywood. Doris Day's cinematic journey began with her first acting role in Romance on the High Seas, where her naivety about filmmaking was evident. In her autobiography, she amusingly recounted asking when they would leave for the cruise ship on the first day of filming, unaware that the scenes were to be shot on a soundstage. Variety's review hailed Day as a charming and talented newcomer, labeling her a clear winner. Despite her initial innocence, Day's performance garnered positive attention. A recurring theme in the film involves the character Mrs. Elvira Kent's dreadful singing voice, with others repeatedly urging her not to sing. Interestingly, Janice Page, playing Mrs. Dan Kent, was a musical star in reality, later taking the lead in The Pajama Game on Broadway, a role Day would later portray in the film adaptation. In summary, Romance on the High Seas marked Doris Day's debut, showcasing her early innocence on set. Variety praised her, and the film humorously juxtaposed Mrs. Kent's singing struggles with Janice Page's actual musical prowess. A fascinating start to Day's illustrious career. Warner Bros. faced a casting challenge for the 1948 film due to Betty Hutton's unavailability and director Michael Curtis's tax issues. Jules Stein, unaware of Doris Day's initial rejection, suggested her for the role. A successful screen test followed, threatening to involve Stein's own project if Curtis persisted. Doris Day's connection to the film began at a showbiz party where Sammy Kahn recognized her suitability for the Kahnstein score. Director Michael Curtis, impressed after hearing her sing, invited her to audition for the role of Georgia Garrett. In the movie trailer, Doris Day and Janice Page showcased a brief duet, both donning matching up swept hairdos. The production's intricate behind-the-scenes dynamics, including the casting challenges, successful screen tests, and Doris Day's introduction to the film, shaped the final product. This collaborative effort, driven by unforeseen circumstances and creative decisions, laid the foundation for romance on the high seas place in cinematic history.